Good morning, I'm Andy Sanderson, this is Ruby, and we're off to Ask an Expert. As you can see, the weather's against us, but we're off inside to go and see Andre Bright at Awana Jones and Bright Solicitors. Come on, Ruby, let's go in in the drive. In you go, out of here. Hello Andre, thanks very much for inviting us round this morning to answer a few questions to help people with their house buying and selling process. Now it's well known that you are the fastest solicitor in the whole of North Wales, having completed a marathon in under five hours last weekend. But tell me, can you help our customers who are buying and selling speed up their move? The first thing that most people ask is how long does the whole process take? Normally you're looking at six to eight weeks. You can do it quicker, it depends on mortgages, etc. Um, but it's how, how, how much work you do at the start, really. When is the best time for somebody to instruct you as their solicitor if they're buying or selling a property? Well, it goes back to what I was saying previously, really. The first, the first thing you should be doing is instructing your solicitors really straight away. The earlier you can get those instructions to your solicitor, the better. Um, the biggest issue we're finding, particularly in Gwynedd, is the searches because they tend to take four to five weeks. So the earlier they can go off, the better. So that really it's a case of getting in contact with your solicitor straight away. Also as well with your mortgage situation, those are the searches and mortgages are the two things that tend to take the longest to do. So if you go ahead and get your broker on board early, get your solicitor on board early, they can do the preparation work that's necessary to try and move it forward quicker. So these are things that you can do before you actually find a property or put a property on the market? Absolutely, even, I think yeah. it's, it's sensible, I think, before you before you even make the offer, to, especially if you're getting a mortgage, to have that in principle. If you're not getting a mortgage, you want to do a survey, make contact with local surveyors, have one ready then you can move it a lot quicker and it's, a, it's that preparation work you do at the start that's key. We get a lot of people that aren't resident in the area at the moment. Can mm -hmm. you tell me, is it essential that your clients actually have face-to-face -face meetings with you if they are buying and selling a property or can you do a lot of it over the phone by post and use an email now? Well, I think given the way Technology has moved on, particularly with the conveyancing market. Um, it's not necessary; it's not essential to be able to meet somebody face to face. It's obviously desirable if you want to, because um, it's it, sometimes you can achieve more that way. But I would say most conveyancing is done over the phone and email now. I mean, really, we as solicitors are not necessarily limited geographically just to this area. The speed in which you can get documents and and have communication with people nowadays, um, and particularly with us, I mean, we're quite um, we've moved with the times quite quickly. I mean, we, for example, offer a WhatsApp service to people, so they're getting regular updates on their phones. Um, we, we can have, we do out of hours calls, so that, for example, if you have if somebody's working all day and they can't necessarily speak between nine and five, we're available to speak later on in the evening. Um, things like that enable you to do that work mm -hmm. without necessarily having that face-to-face -face call. So I think a lot of people have this conception: you need the one-on-one -on -one yeah. meetings. But if you can fit them in, fine. If you can't, then yeah, yeah most. Of it you can do remotely. Do you think that as you're based locally here in North Wales mm -hmm. it's advantageous to use you if somebody's buying or selling a property in this area or would they be just as easy to use a solicitor where they currently live? Personally I think it has a massive advantage using a local solicitor. I know I might be slightly biased saying that but um, there's certain aspects, particularly around here, that you would need the local knowledge to be able to uh, to be able to deal with. For example, um, radon gas is a very common entry that we get when we do an environmental search. Um, radon gas is something I naturally occur in gas, but it's found throughout Gwynedd, and it's not as problematic as it sounds. Um, it's never really caused an issue the entire time I've been doing conveyancing, but is something that perhaps if you're employing a solicitor in London or in Birmingham they wouldn't be familiar with because it's not local to them. Um, and also the, things like the lay of the land for example, I mean again the planning situation, we have regular deans which is known only a national park and we're going to council, we know how they operate, we know their systems. Um, that's quite advantageous particularly if you get somebody who's perhaps wanting to develop a property in the future after buying. Andre, a lot of people ask me which solicitor should I use mm. and generally I will give out maybe two or three names and phone numbers for people mm. to ring around to choose for themselves. Mm. A lot of people just phone those three solicitors and then they just go for the cheapest one really. Mm. Can you tell me 
two or three good tips for how to choose a good solicitor? Um, I think I think the biggest issue is that there's a conception that solicitors are often sort of a, a very closed profession. So the first, the first tip is transparency. You need somebody who's going to be effective at communicating with you. Um, communication is such a big issue with conveyance. You spoke to us, we, you know, we've spoken before about the speed of a conveyance. Well, the more communication you have with your solicitor, um, the smoother it normally goes. And another issue is the, um, the, the speed in which that communication is going back and forward. Um, because a lot of people ha will complain of having difficulties with your with their solicitor or their solicitors not keeping them in the loop as to where they are in the transaction. Um, we pride ourselves on being very open, very transparent. Um, I mean, you've got to remember some of these people, particularly first time buyers, have never done this before or might not have moved home for 10 years. Um, they don't know, necessarily know what some of the terminology is. They don't. When we talk about searches, they don't necessarily know what we're talking about in terms of those searches. So it's, we make it a point to try and explain each step, what, what's happening now, why it's happening, and then what's happening next, and the time scale it will take, so that our clients remain clear as to exactly where they are in the conveyance. That cuts down on the amount of queries they have with us, um, and it makes matters a lot a lot smoother because they can sometimes assist then in moving that forward. Um. <laughs> Roomy. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, okay. The, I think the other misconception people have is, is they they're a bit scared maybe to phone their solicitors because of the cost situation. Um, most conveyances, if not all of them, are all done on a fixed fee basis now, which means that. I'm not encouraging people to phone the office 100 times, but it means that you know if you phone in the office 10 times or 20 times, it, it, the, the fees tend to stay the same unless there's a major unforeseen problem that goes yeah. ahead. Um, often, email communication is, is the easiest way of moving matters forward. I think in terms of cost, people will go for the cheapest, but the cheapest isn't necessarily the best. Um, you know, you could, you've got to remember this is one of the most important things you're doing in your life. It's certainly the biggest thing you'll ever pur purchase in your entire life. Um, and you want an expert and somebody who knows what they're doing and somebody you trust as well. And if you use one of these big conveyancing firms, for example, who you're just dealing with a call centre every time you phone up, that's not necessarily going to be the best thing for you. You want somebody who's who you can uh, communicate effectively with and also who's available for you. Yeah, no, um, I was going to say that's, that's important. I think it's nothing more frustrating than trying to phone up your solicitor to get something sorted out and, and they're not in their office or there's nobody in the office available to help you and you're left in the lurch for a day or two. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll give you an example. It's an expert job. If, you, if you're having surgery, would you want the best surgeon to do it or do you want the cheapest surgeon to do it? That's the, that's the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> okay, Andre, thanks very much for taking a few minutes and some time out mm. to answer these questions. Mm. If anybody's got uh, any further questions or anything, I'm sure that they'll be able to ring you. Um, More than happy to. I think your office number here is... Uh, uh, 01341 281 uh, 108, or we have the Towing Office, which is just above me, 01654 711 419.